coming into this place today in agreement to give God praise. Amen. This is your first time visiting, whether you're in the building or it's your first time visiting online. We do not take up an offering at New Covenant. Tithes and offerings are between you and the Lord. That's what those boxes are hanging on that wall for. We have mobile means through our mobile app, through our text to give number. But you can give in obedience to what God speaks into your spirit. Amen. Yeah, see, the preacher started talking about giving. There ain't nobody wants to amen that. But let me tell you something. When we, when we honor God with what we have, when it brings honor and glory to Him, it opens up things in your life. It will open the windows of heaven in your life. I'm just saying. So don't be preaching me down. Because that's what it does. But I just want to welcome everyone here today. I want to welcome all those that are viewing online. That we can come together in unity and we can give God all the praise. Amen. So let's just come into agreement. Father, we welcome you into this house today. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do today as we give ourselves over to you. Father, that as we worship you, as we praise you, Father, we praise you because that is what breaks the spirit of heaviness. It breaks down the chains of bondage in our life that we can lay them at your feet today, that we can come into your throne room boldly seeking your presence today. So, God, we give you the glory today for what you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, shout with a victorious shout in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
of the leadership, God, as we give ourselves over to you to say, God, use me. Equip me today, Father. Equip me so that I can do what you've called me to do on this earth. 
that I will no longer neglect. I will no longer turn a nose to what you have placed into my life and the anointing that you've set upon my life, Father, to be used on this earth. So many of us, God, have walked away from the calling that's on our lives. So many of us have walked away from the anointing that is on our life, and we are no longer going to walk away from what you have called us to do. But God, we are going to do what you've called us to do under the power of your anointing and not worry about what other people say or what other people do. But God, we want to honor you. So God, I thank you today. I thank you that you're hearing the cries of our heart. You're hearing, Father God, what we're saying today, Father. And we give ourselves to you to be used for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have been in this series called Equipped. Let me just ask you something. If you either here at the church, at here in service, or whether you've watched it on YouTube, our YouTube channel, New Covenant Port Author, whether you've seen it on that platform, or you've watched it live on Facebook, or you've been here in person, have you received anything from this series equipped? Yes, 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 yes absolutely. Amen? Okay, let me just say that there, there is a purpose behind this series, and, and it's, it's everything, that is, everything that is preached, everything that is taught uh, in any form at all, it, it is for the intent of equipping us, strengthening us, strengthening us, building us up so that we can grow as a body of Christ. Amen? And not just as a body, but as an individual. So here's the thing is, is that in this series, the Equip series, we've been discussing what's called, and this is just a general term, the fivefold ministry. And if you remember, way back at the very beginning, in the very first introductory message of the fivefold ministry, I said there's no such thing. Y'all remember that? I got a bunch of dirty looks, and, and I've deleted all of those emails and, and all of the comments. Gone. Because I'm not going to let them affect me. That is a man-made term, fivefold. What it is actually called is the five gifts that Jesus gave to the body. Amen. Gift. Let me ask you a question. Can you earn a gift? Can you purchase a gift? No. no, you cannot. A gift is something that is given to us, and all you can do on your end as the receiver is to receive the gift that has been given. Amen? Amen. And so Jesus himself has given us five gifts. Now, it's not wrong to call it the fivefold. We call it the fivefold. I say it over and over, and I have been saying it over and over during this preaching series. Uh, the five-fold ministry. It's just that that's how we understand it. But I wanted you to understand that this, this is not like some kind of a job. And I know you've heard me say that. You know, people say, well, what do you do? Well, I, I, I'm a pastor. Oh, okay, that's your job. No, that's not my job. That's the calling that's on my life. That's what I do. Okay? And so these are not job titles. Although that these are jobs that are done inside the body, this is not a, a job that you put in an application for. It's not a job that you submit your resume and say, I think I want to be an evangelist. First of all, most people couldn't handle the, the ridicule and the uh, strenuous amount of commitment that it would take to get out into the streets and to preach the gospel and to take all the backlash that comes with being firm in what you're preaching. Most people would give up after their first message. And you know what? Most people do give up. And that's how you know that they're not called. That's how you know that they've just filled a position. When they walk away from whatever it is, you know that they're not called to that position. Because when God puts an anointing upon someone's life, it doesn't matter if all of the forces of hell come against you, you will remain standing firm upon the foundation that was built. Amen. 
And so this, this fivefold, this five giftings that Jesus has given us, let me... Ah. Detour. I didn't give the scriptures to you. Detour. Sorry. Isaiah 55 11. I say it often. I love Isaiah 55 11 because he reminds us that his word will not fail you, that he will not fail you. The Lord sent me to that passage this morning, and I say, Lord, I, I know that because I love it. It's my favorite passage. I, you don't have to remind me of what I love, although He wants me to see more than just that one passage of Scripture. And He began to reveal to me something, and I, I think I was supposed to speak this before before praise and worship this morning, but I think now, right at this very moment, is when he wants us to hear this. In, in Isaiah 55, when we see, beginning in verse 6, he says, Seek the Lord while you can find Him. So many people are not seeking God because they think that God is playing hide and seek with him with them and they think that God is this is this cosmic unreachable deity that is you know sitting somewhere in the sky pulling strings like a puppeteer and 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 all of these these different things but I, I want to deliver a message to you today that you would know beyond the shadow of a doubt, uh, a doubt that we did not start from some big bang theory that we did not evolve from slime or some sort of an organism that crawled out of the water but yet we were spoken into existence at the beginning in the creation in the garden when God took the dirt and formed it with his own hands and then breathed the breath of life into it and said live be alive Amen. We live in a society today that wants to lean towards science, and there's nothing wrong with science. Science pays our bills, literally. But when we tend to lean away from creation and begin to lean towards what man thinks... We're living in a very dangerous place in our life. The Lord says, seek the Lord while you can find him. The reason he says that is because there's going to come a time when he will not be found. He's very visible to us today. You say, I thought he was an invisible God. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is that we can call out to him with our very breath and he is there to answer. But there's going to come a time when life as we know it comes to a halt. It ceases and there will be no more calling out, but there will be a crying out. He says, call on him while he is near and let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. And I'm like, Lord, why are you having me speak this? What is so significant about this? But he began to reveal it to me this morning as I was doing prep for this message. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong and let them turn to the Lord that He may have mercy upon them or on them. Yes, turn to our God for He will forgive generously. We as people will not forgive. We may say we forgive, but we hold things against one another. Yeah, you better pull your toes in a little tighter today because I'm here to step on them. I'm so sick and tired of, of Christians acting like Christians but not living like Christians. Yeah. 
Oh, let me say that again. I'm so sick and tired of watching people live a religious lifestyle and you are just as nasty in the nostrils of God as the Pharisees and the Sadducees themselves that came in a religious time and crucified our Lord. <laughs> I didn't come for this message today. I came for an uplifting message. I come for an encouraging Thanksgiving type message. You chose the wrong preacher today. <laughs> we get offended. We get our feelings hurt. We get our hearts trampled on. And then we, we hold a grudge against someone, against our loved ones. And let me tell you this, and you, you need to hear it from this preacher because this, this is what I'm telling you. Is, this is from the Word of God. He's saying if you don't forgive like I forgave you, then you are the one that's in the wrong. That's right. That's right. I don't care what they did to you. I don't care what took place in that situation. If you choose to harbor hatred and frustration against an individual because of something that took place, then you are the one that is in sin yep. right. because you're choosing not to forgive. Let them turn to the Lord that He may have mercy on them. Well, what if they don't? What if they don't turn to the Lord? You still got to let it go, baby. Yep. You still got to let it go. There, there's no contingency in this. There's no contingency that says, well, if you let it go, I'll let it go. That's the mindset of mine, uh, of men. That's the mindset of men that we put a condition upon forgiveness. That if you'll do this, then I'll do that. No, you have no authority to do that. Only God says, if you do this, I'll do this. Amen. He said, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are nothing or are far beyond anything that you can imagine. Well, if we operated in our thoughts and in our ways, we would burn this place to the ground. But God says, I, you don't even think the way that I think. You don't think the way that I think, and my ways are far beyond anything that you could possibly imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God, I just don't understand. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. When you think that you understand and you think you got it all together, always remember God is always above that. Amen. Amen. The rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. And they cause the grain to grow, producing the seed for the farmer and the bread for the hungry. And this is where I come in. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it produces fruit. My job is to put it in the ground. My job is not to make it bust open and grow. That's God's job. So many of us today, in this room today, and there's people seeing this, whether it's live or on playback, that you've given up. You've given up because you haven't seen the fruit of what you think is your labor. And let me tell you something in this place today, and let's settle this forever. It is not your job to make it grow. It is your job to put the seed in the ground and say, God, you do what only you can do. Amen. And get off of it, whatever it is. Quit digging the seed back up saying you're not making it grow. Let God do what only God can do. Amen. Amen. How are you doing today? Are y'all okay? Yes. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 11. <sighs> 
I'm looking for the E's. I'm getting close. I actually, I've got it printed out on a piece of paper, but I like it in my Bible better because I've got it highlighted and underlined. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 11. Now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. So we understand that it is the job of all five of these gifts to equip the body and to strengthen the body and to cause the body, or not cause the body, but to, to uh, uh, work and build up the body of Christ. This will continue until we all have come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we'll no longer be immature children. I've kind of, I've, I've looked over that. I, I've looked over that. Who wants to be called immature? I don't want to be called immature, although sometimes I'm immature. <laughs> Sometimes we exhibit immature behavior. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. We, we, we do these things and we say, we, 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 we blame everyone but taking our own responsibility. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will be influenced when people try, we won't be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like truth. But instead, we'll speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. And it helps other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing in full and full of love. I'm going to back up. At the very beginning of this chapter, the Apostle Paul is begging those that he is writing to, the, the church at Ephesus, and, and ultimately he's, he's, he's begging us as well in 2022. He says, I beg you to lead a life that is worthy of your calling. I wonder how many people are living a life that is worthy of the calling that is on your life. I, I wonder how many people today in the church could honestly say, I am doing what God has called me to do. It's okay to speak up. We, we, we can talk in, in this setting. <coughs> But he says, I'm begging you to lead a life that is worthy of your calling. You know what? It's not just doing what you're called to do, but living a life that will honor God in the process. He says, always be humble and gentle and be patient with each other. <laughs> Sometimes that's tough. <laughs> Sometimes it's tough just to be patient with each other. Oh, listen to this. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together in peace. I think we should just go ahead and cross that out. We don't want that. I'm, I'm being facetious. Yeah, we don't want to be patient with each other. We don't want to make allowance for each other's faults. But God did. God did, didn't he? We've got to take responsibility for who we are. 
This is not just a, a message to the to the five gifts, but we are the body. Even though I am a I am one of those five gifts, I am still a part of the body, and so therefore I have to give myself over and grow up and quit being a child. That's what First Corinthians thirteen eleven says. He says, "When I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things." I, I spoke something in a message not too long back and I didn't get an overwhelming response from it because I think it offended a lot of people we as Christians need to get our pacifiers out of our mouth and be grown up people yeah. right. quit pacifying one another and quit sucking on the pacifier yourself and grow up and be a child of God, the, the child of God that He's called us all to be. Right. We've got to do what God said in His Word. He said in Ephesians 6.11 to put on God, all of God's armor. Well, you see, we always use that passage of Scripture when we're talking about spiritual warfare and spiritual battles. Let me tell you something. If we would put on the whole armor of God, we would avoid a lot of spiritual battles. Amen. We wouldn't find ourselves going from fight to fight because the enemy would know that we are already suited up and ready for battle. And so, therefore, he's going to have to back up and punt. Amen. But so many Christians in the church today, I don't care where you go. You can go to any church, whatever. You can go to the second church of the frozen chosen on the next corner if you want to. So many Christians today are getting run over because we're choosing not to suit up like God called us to be. It has way more to do than with just going to some fight somewhere. If we would walk around like this, now some of us don't have all of this. Some of us have this. I, I told my grandson, I told my, one of my grandsons the other day, he said, Papa, what is that? And I said, that's my bank. He said, that's your bank. I said, yeah, that's where I keep all my money. <laughs> I, keep, I carry my bank with me. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Must be a million there. <laughs> There's a lot in there. I've made a lot of deposits and very few withdrawals. <laughs> But it, it is important to it is important to give ourselves to all of the five gifts. We live in a we live in a uh, we live in a body of today. Uh, we live in a in a time and an age today. And I've covered this in in many of the other messages, especially when I started out with the apostolic and the prophetic giftings. And a lot of people try to push those away and say they don't exist. They're, they're not existing in the body today. So what you're telling me is, is you don't believe God's Word. When someone has that viewpoint and they say, well, uh, apostles don't, don't exist in the church today or prophets don't exist in the church today, you're, what you're saying is, is that you don't believe what God said. That's what you're saying. because You don't have an argument with me. I know the grace that's on my life, and I'm comfortable with the grace that's on my life, and therefore I do what God is calling me to do. I, I set up atmospheres that are conductive. I set up atmospheres that are conducive with opening the windows of heaven and bringing heaven into earthly realms. That is the anointing that is on my life. That is the calling that is on my life. And I may not be the best at it, but I'm doing everything I can possibly do to be the best at it. What about you? What about you? Are you fulfilling the calling that is on your life? Are you doing what God has called you to do? You might not be called to one of these five gifts, but you know what you are called to do? Be a child of God. Act like a child of God. Walk like a child of God. Talk like a child of God. How do you learn to do those things? You come into environments like this, and you submit yourself to the leadership. I'm going to share a scripture with you in just a minute that pertains to that. It is, it is my job 
to bring these atmospheres together. And it is so difficult to do in a day and an age like today because there are so many things that are biting for our time. Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, whoever's owning Twitter, whether or not I can buy a stupid Taylor Swift ticket or not, who gives a flip? <laughs> Whether or not we're going to do some kind of congressional investigation on Ticketmaster. Who cares? But this is the thing that we consume our minds with. Instead of consuming our mind with the Word of God. We make every excuse in the book why not to go to uh, an assembly somewhere. We make every excuse in the book why we don't go to church, why we're not going to go to this church, why we're not going to go to that church. We've got our priorities jacked up. I need to be really careful about what I say because I've told y'all about the power that is in my words. But sometimes I close your ears, God. <laughs> sometimes I wish I was in a third world country where people wanted to serve God. Sometimes I wish I was in a third world country so that when people came to the place that, that, that was receiving the word in worship, they came hungry and on fire for the word of God because they walked for days to get there. We're so stuck up and stubborn in the American church. It's too hot in this building. It's too cold in this building. I got to walk up that ramp. The door opens the wrong way. Get over yourself. Yeah. You want to know why? You want to know why so many pastors are dragging up? That's a construction term, dragging up. You want to know why so many pastors are dragging up in the earth today? Because of whiny baby Christians. Amen. Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, it ain't their salary. It, it, it ain't whether or not... People want to hear the Word of God. It's what people whine about. Yeah. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much garbage is in my brain from what I've heard people say and why people don't want to come to church. And it's not just New Covenant. It's all over. I, I talk to, I talk to, listen to me, I talk to pastors in third world countries. That tell me almost the same thing that I'm telling you right now. That even in their culture, the fire and the hunger that they have for God, they still whine and complain about their environment. And so it's not just an American thing. It's a people thing. But I want you to understand the importance of why we need these five gifts in the body today. All of them. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. We need all five of these in the body today just like you need all the ingredients in a cake. I want you to think about it just for a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... You got flour, sugar, maybe a little bit of salt, an egg, and some oil. If you put all five of those ingredients together and stir them up real good and put them in the oven, you know what's going to come out? Okay. Something very yummy. You leave oil out, or you leave the egg out, or you leave the flour out, or God forbid you leave the sugar out, <laughs> you're going to come out with something that's really nasty. But this is the American church. We've got a lot of nasty bodies because we're leaving ingredients out. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. We have cultivated such a disgusting atmosphere to God because we're leaving out ingredients. We don't want none of that apostolic stuff in our church. 
We don't want none of that prophetic stuff in our church. We, we, we're, not, we're not doing that Holy Spirit stuff. Nuh-uh. <laughs> not here. That's why you're labeled the Church of the Chosen Frozen. And you're not frozen because I said it. You're frozen because you're not connected with the fire. Amen. Oh, come on now. Yeah. They're frozen because they're not connected to the fire. Amen. We need all five of these gifts. We need an atmosphere that is conducive. We need that apostolic atmosphere that opens up the portals of heaven and says, Father, come into this place. We need the fire of the prophetic. We need that in the atmosphere. It's almost like a lightning bolt. You, you, do you know what a lightning bolt? Do you know how much power is in a lightning bolt? 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> Doc Brown said that. Y'all haven't seen Back to the Future? <laughs> you know, he wasn't lying. He was real. It really is 1.21 gigawatts. That's 10, 10 billion watts of electricity in one lightning bolt. One lightning bolt, one lightning bolt is 300 million volts of electricity. 300 million volts of electricity at 30,000 amps of power in one light, lightning strike, one. Now let me give you a comparison. 300 million volts, there's outlets all around this building. Those are 120 outlets. 120 volts. 15 amps in those electrical outlets to plug in lights, cameras, televisions, whatever it is. 120 volts, 15 amps. One bolt of lightning has 300 million of those. We need that in the body of Christ. But do you know what we do? A lot of churches act like those outlets and restrict the power from flowing. A lot of churches today will restrict the power from flowing. And every now and then someone will plug in, but for the most part it stays hindered. Because let me tell you something, we have an unlimited amount of power. Look around this room, there are outlets everywhere. Everywhere. We do not have a power shortage what we have is a power connectivity problem. Wow. And it's not just it here. It's at churches all around the globe. There is no limit. There is no limitation and there is, there, there is not a lack of amount of power. But have very few that are wanting to plug into it. We need all five gifts in the body today. And not only do we need all five gifts, all five gifts need you. Amen. Not only do we need all five gifts, but all five gifts need you. We need each other. In other words, is what I'm saying. As one of the fivefold gifts, I need you, but you also need me. Because I am one of the gifts that brings the equipping into the house of God, that brings in what we need, the nourishment, the strength, the atmosphere. I am one of the gifts that brings this to the body of Christ. But if you are not drawing from that well, the problem is not on me. The problem is on the one that is not drawing from the well. I said that in the wording just a couple of weeks ago, that if you don't recognize the gift, the calling, the anointing that is on my life, you will not receive from what I send out. Amen. If you cannot recognize, if you cannot honor the grace that is on my life, then you will not receive what I am giving you. You will only hear a message and you will go home just as empty as you came. Amen. 
I know that's not popular. I understand. I get it. But you know what? Preachers don't preach like this today because they want to preach to pocketbooks. They want to preach to wallets, to checkbooks. I could give two rips of a wooden nipple, nickel, flibla, yippa, flipping, nipple, nickel, whatever it is. I don't really care. <laughs> I started watching a show just the other day. Y'all know that I'm a binge watcher. Here I was preaching against that a while ago, and I'm one of them. But I watch really constructive stuff. <laughs> but I was watching this show about a craftsman. A, a wood, a wood, a master craftsman. I was watching the show, and I just began to binge watch it because this dude was just, it, it just, he captivated my attention span at that moment. One of the things that he was talking about was the sequoia red trees, uh, uh, redwood trees that are in California, and I, I have used the sequoias in in teaching uh, examples in the past. I can remember teaching about them, and so I had to go and I had to Google this information just real quick so that I could understand it more for this setting. Do you, uh, do you remember or do you know why the sequoias survive? live as long as they do and grow as tall as they grow? I, I heard several correct answers. Okay, there's several reasons why they grow as strong as they do and they do not fall to attack. Is one, because of their root system. Is because their root system reaches out and and intertwines and intertangles with the other redwoods that are around them. So first off, right then, first off is no matter what storm comes to their pathway, no matter what type of an environment that they find themselves in, they are linked together and they strengthen one another. Another reason is the different variations of leaves that are on one single tree. There are three different types of leaves that are on a sequoia. The, the leaves that are, that are down low, which, I mean, you're talking about a 300-foot tree, but that are in the lower canopy of these trees they they not only capture moisture because here's the thing is is water has got to get to the top of that 300 foot tree and so therefore there there is a a almost like a cardiovascular system that is inside that tree that holds moisture on the inside of that tree and it is literally pumped like the blood is pumped in our body and the leaves that are in the lower canopy, they, they grab nutrients and they grab water, moisture. And then there's, there's leaves that are like in the midsection of that, of that tree that it, it looks a lot different than the leaves that are at the bottom. And it has functions where it brings in nutrients and it brings in... Uh, you know, moisture and different things that, that, that the tree needs to survive. And then the, the leaves that are at the very tip top that are in the view of the sky, their sole job, their only job is to collect moisture. There's different ele elevations. There's different jobs that have to take place. The root system has a job. The root system creates the base and it brings the nutrients into the tree that are needed. So many people look at these five gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Look at it as some kind of a pyramid thing. 
When in all actuality, I showed you this last week, you need to flip that pyramid upside down and all five gifts are actually part of the foundation that the body should be on. Look it up. The, there's nothing wrong with honoring the five gifts. There's nothing wrong with honoring the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. There's nothing wrong with giving those people honor for what they do. But when you worship them, that becomes a problem. When you set them on a pedestal because they're an eloquent speaker, there is a problem. I hear so many people, oh, I, I watch so-and-so all the time, every day. You probably got every one of their messages memorized. You've watched them so much. But what about the gift? Because the giver is the one that's getting all of the attention. We need each other. We need each other. How many people have ever heard the verse of Scripture quoted to you? Let us not forsake the assembling together, as the manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, saith the Lord Almighty God. <laughs> yes, <sir>. <laughs> <laughs> I've quoted it many times. Yes. But verse 24 speaks so powerfully. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. We don't want that. We don't want to motivate one another. We want to hold one another accountable. That's what we want to do as people. But the Lord tells us to think of ways to motivate one another. Not think of ways to cut one another down. Not think of ways. And, and listen, those ways may be glaring. We may not even have to search. We may not even have to go through your Facebook feed and, and, and find out details. But he says, think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And then, in the next verse, when he says, don't forsake the assembling, what is the purpose? He says, in verse 25, in the latter part, encourage one another. Encourage one another. Come together and strengthen one another. Encourage one another. That is why we need to be coming together. It's not for attendance. It's not to pay the bills, although those things are important. It is important to keep the heat on on a cold day like today. It is important to be able to get literature or to purchase things. But the reason that we are coming together is to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, to motivate one another. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 and I'm, I'm going to begin uh, one of my four closings at this moment <laughs> but I, I say this that if you're one of the five gifts if you are if, if you know that you are called and you are one of the five gifts or you believe that you are one of the five gifts I say get busy get busy because we need each other and I, I've heard so many people say well I don't have a platform you don't need a platform to be used by God that's right you don't need a platform to be used by God, but if you will be used by God, if you need a platform, He'll make it available. Absolutely. Did y'all hear that? Did I say too many words too fast? You don't need a platform to be used by God. Just be used by God, and if you need a platform, He'll give it. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, He says, Since God chose you, to be the holy people that He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Wow. We have already stumbled.
I don't even know if I want to read the next part because <laughs> because then the next part is going to cause me to be guilty. <laughs> but that's what we do, don't we? We choose not to read scriptures that we don't like. He says, make allowance for each other's faults. I'm just curious. How many people have faults in here today? Every one of us have a fault. Some of us have multiple. But he says, make allowance for those faults. And crucify them every chance you get. <laughs> Oh, oh, he said, forgive. Huh. Wow. But if only God knew what I was going to have to forgive. What does it say? Remember, the Lord forgave you. What if God says, eh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to choose not to forgive you today. I hear it too many times, and I've probably even said it many myself. It's too much to forgive. How much did he have to forgive when his son was hanging on the cross bleeding? Right. Oh, you had to throw it out that way, right? Yeah, I did. Because it applies to my life. Holy cow, where's my wallet? Somebody stole my wallet. I'll be taking donations. Uh, but listen, do I, you know, so often we carry that card. I was going to pull my wallet out and pull a card out and say, you know, when we hold that card, we hold that unforgiveness card until the right moment appears. And when the right moment appears, we pull that card out and say, remember this? Mm -hmm. don't, don't be acting all holy and religious like you've never done it. You may have done it this morning. I don't know what you've done. I don't, it, 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 I don't know. But I can tell you this right now that the Lord says you need to remember that I have not only forgiven you of one thing, but I've forgiven you of everything in your life. Amen. And His love continues to flow. His forgiveness continues to flow. Because the Word says that He chooses not to remember anymore. Amen. Closing Scriptures. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't finish. Okay, third closing. <laughs> Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. You wonder why there's not harmony on the earth today? You know, we, we, we just got through with some election times, you know, and, and especially when you go into the big ones, you know, like the presidential elections where we're talking about peace and, and you know, and the U.N., they want to spread world peace and, and all of these wonderful things that politicians lie to us about. And, and, but, but what the Lord is telling us is, is if you want perfect harmony, you've got to learn to walk in love. You've got you've to learn to walk Walk in love to clothe yourselves with love which binds us together in perfect harmony and he says let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts if you are one that says well I don't have that forgiveness that's because you don't have something that comes from Christ you say, well, I can't forgive. Then that means that you don't have the peace that comes from Christ in your heart. He says, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. We've been talking about the fivefold gifts of Jesus to the body of Christ. We, we've been discussing this for 
a number of weeks about learning what God's viewpoint is in this area and why we need these gifts. But you will go home today and you will take nothing with you if you don't listen to this next passage of Scripture that I'm going to give you. He says in Hebrews 13, 17, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls. And they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Their work is to watch over your souls. My work as one of the spiritual leaders, as one of the gifts to the body, my work is to watch over your souls and to be held accountable. So far, so, so many times I end up going before God and saying, God, that's just not fair because I, all I do is what you've called me to do. And I, I send out that, that word, I send it out and, and, and I try to, I try to allow it to bring nurture and to feed and to encourage people. But listen, people have to do it on their own. I can't force Andrea to sing, although I can make her feel bad for not singing. But see, she has a gift. Layton has a, a gift to be used by God, but he has to be a willing vessel. She has to be a willing vessel. And so what do I do? I get on my face before God. And I say, God, I put the seed in the ground. I'm tired of digging it up. I'm tired of digging it up and seeing whether or not you're making it grow. I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to do what only you can do. So, so many times we do this, though, right? We, we try to force God's hand in certain areas. Move on my family. Move on my neighbor. Lord, just take care of my unruly boss. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We've got to learn to trust Him. Let's stand to our feet this morning. We've got to learn to trust God and we've got to learn to allow God to work in our life in a way that only God can do.